to where. Oh, okay. Good morning. So change slides. You go this way, back this way. And this is the laser. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Um, uh, how do I get that? There we go. You can watch the screen. It's easier. Oh, how about that? Um, I, uh, um, <coughs> well, I was wondering what one could do with uh, very uh, limited resources in uh, doing something uh, practical for the, uh, uh, the world, basically. And uh, so um, I review the uh, uh, some of the common characteristics of, 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 uh, of Leonard, and they're basically, uh, the, the, basically the, the best thing is we don't have any uh, ionization uh, dangerous stuff. Uh, it's also characteristic of inconsistency and light or heavy ionization work. Um, and there's many, many different ways it's done. Um, and it, it does seem to me that uh, it requires some kind of dynamic system. A static, uh, uh, you put the materials together and they don't, uh, boy, that light is uh, uh, intense. Uh, so uh, putting that together and uh, coming up with a um, a set of working principles uh, that, that somebody could do that doesn't have a lot of equipment or resources. Um, also, if you have a metallurgical background, that might help. Um, uh, uh, <coughs> and so we, 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 we expect we have some reactions that don't produce uh, uh, neutrons or tritium. Uh, and there are some listed here. Uh, these are electron uh, reactions that uh, are known that produce uh, substantial energy, as, as shown there. There are also a, a, a similar set with, with deuterium, but uh, why go to the expense and difficulty of deuterium if hydrogen will work? Perhaps, or, and, and they, they produce uh, a little more power, but you know, if you get it, you, you can do it with light hydrogen, you can uh, accept a little bit less uh, uh, effect. And uh, so I've, I've made some tests with uh, light hydrogen in al alloys with uh, uh, lithium and boron in copper, copper being easy to fabricate. Uh, it, you can get it pure. Uh, um, and these uh, reactions produce reasonable energy. Actually, they're more than the hot fusion. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the weapon uh, uh, energy release. Uh, and uh, I, I, I think we're gonna have to have some moving charges. Okay, so we look at, uh, oh, how does this work? Oh. Did I get that the next one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, we got uh, the I've there were three uh, uh, phases of, of my experimentation. Uh, well, the one was just uh, directly reacting uh, lithium and boron in in copper with hydrogen at high temperature, and then uh, quenching and to preserve the, the high temperature composition and get it into a calorimeter really quickly. Uh, but that doesn't work very well. So I basically tumbled to the idea that uh, uh, looking at Pons and Fleischmann's experiment, you have a, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, excuse me, a, a screen of bubbles across the cathode, which has got to, among other things, uh, dis uh, distribute the uh, flow of electrons into the, into the anode in both time as the bubbles move up and, and spatially. Uh, so I uh, basically did not want to do uh, electrochemistry. It's very difficult. Uh, so I made a, uh, a, um, a basically a, excuse me, I'm going the wrong direction. There we go. So I make a, uh, basically a, a, a capacitor that's leaky by uh, the, the red on there is uh, uh, the copper uh, electrodes, you can call them electrodes, and alternate them with a, uh, uh, a dielectric uh, material, which is basically a, 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 a gauze to keep the, uh, the plates apart and a, a loaded with um, a, a, a mixture of, in, usually uh, vacuum pump oil, but uh, I've used uh, glycerin and uh, 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 other materials, uh, loaded with graphite particles, the smallest I could find, to uh, disrupt the, or to put the uh, injection of electrons into the, uh, into the electrodes uh, in a uh, disrupted manner so that you're going to have uh, electron, uh, the, you're going to have electron, uh, a, a distribution of elect electrical charges and therefore uh, you're shaking up the the uh, the system. Okay, then these go into a calorimeter, which is basically described there, the, the guts of it, uh, with thermocouples and the uh, uh, we're, no, the same thing, huh? Uh, uh oh. Uh, I, I put this the specimen on. The, the, uh, the, the bad capacitor on one side and a jewel heater on the other side, and the whole thing is evacuated in a, in a, in a small vacuum chamber so that there's no uh, convection. And uh, then, then there are thermocouples that support the, uh, uh, the, the boat that has the stuff on it. Oh, well, there's the result. Um, and um, so uh, uh, I get uh, the green is the uh, distribution of, of uh, well, it's the, the, the results with the jewel heater and the uh, other, uh, the, the other symbols are, are basically polarity because I was wondering if uh, uh, this particular example one electrode is uh, uh, pure copper, and the other is the uh, boron alloy. And, and so the, the uh, difference in uh, uh, power here is uh, the difference in, okay, and then, uh, yeah, well, let me say, this is the input power versus the, the uh, output of the uh, thermocouple array. Or, um, and so that, that, that difference is the uh, excess heat, which is small, but it's, and those are three sigma bands on, on the green. Uh, so it's small, but significant. And so that proves to me that uh, this system produces an excess of heat. Is there any questions on that? Okay. And, uh, here we've got uh, that excess plotted against input input current, and it's a fairly consistent uh, uh, 
increase and then the, the, uh, the excess power on the vertical scale. Uh, so we got, it's, it's a bit messy, but uh, you get it. Uh, and this then is a, a, uh, an example of a, a calibration run where the, uh, uh, the specimen is a, uh, a uh, um, is unalloyed copper that has been uh, uh, vacuum annealed to, to remove any hydrogen. Okay, I'll quit there for uh, questions. So it's open, it's open to questions. Do you have one here? Hello, thank you. That was a great talk. Uh, Bob Greenier, MFMB. Um, have you considered using nickel with the boron? What? You used copper and boron, right? Yeah, I've also used lithium. What I, what the, the source of my material is uh, they are uh, it, it, materials intended for deoxidation of, of copper. <coughs> It contain about 3% lithium or boron. Actually, I've used a combination and lithium. I've got a whole bunch of, te a bunch of test results. Okay. And, but it, they're not all that consistent. There are some problems, but uh, that's. It, it, it gives me an opportunity to. Um, not necessarily <laughs> the best I've got. It seems that boron's quite important. I, I talked about uh, borosilicate glass and Chalani's. Uh, work, but also Francesco Piantelli uh, and uh, Francesco Cellani both used uh, MACOR, which is 7% uh, boron trioxide in their reactor supports. Oh. And uh, Parkmore finished a reactor on the 23rd of May, which produced 4.2 gigajoules. And he had boron nitride reactor tubes running at 1700 degrees. Oh. Um, so I think boron's a good thing to play with. Well, I think the boron is a reaction. I think it's boron and hydrogen. Well, it's it looks like it's to... boron and nickel um, producing uh, uh, gallium-69 is what we've observed in the ash from a previous Parkhamov uh, experiment. Oh. We observed it physically. We observed it uh, with a, a, an isotopic process. Um, but there may also be carbon produced in uh, Piantelli and... Um, Chilani reactors, because they don't have the, uh, the option with the nickel, the way it works. But it, it, if people want to look at the video I recorded yesterday, it's very relevant to your work. Yeah. And maybe you could consider using nickel instead of copper. Thank you. OK. Any other, any other question? Then, then okay. we'd like to thank Dr. McCarthy for his work. Thank you very much. Thank you.